today's video, um, I want to talk about lighting, uh, garden lighting, outdoor lighting, uh, in particular solar lighting. These little solar lights here, um, I've been really impressed with these. They are, uh, the solar panel is here on top. It's very dirty. It's a little solar panel on top. And then there's the bulb. And this is, it's plastic on the outside. And it's just a stake that goes into the ground and you just push it in there. All six of them work. All six of them have the same uh, degree of brightness. Um, they last all night. So it's really neat to come out here at night and it lights up really bright, these, uh, these petunias that I have growing here. It's just a charming look and I love them. To give you an idea what these little lights look like, it's almost dark. I mean, it's dark, but it's not completely. You can still see where the sun, that's the west, is uh, almost completely gone. But these little lights really are bright. Look how they light up the petunias. Something I've really wanted to include uh, in the garden area around my greenhouse, which is major under construction, is I wanted a lamp post, a solar powered lamp post. And I'd like to just put one up uh, for now, but I'm thinking ahead and I want to put it somewhere over on this side. But in case I decide later, to put one on this side. I want to be sure that I put it over here someplace where it can be matched. I do like symmetry. So I um, dug up the wisteria that was here and I'm going to put just a small amount of concrete in the ground, raise it up slightly to allow for more dirt to be added and mulch. And I'm going to mount a solar lamp post in this area. I think that would be really pretty. Uh, I'll show you the one that I got. This is the solar lamp post that I got off of Amazon. And um, it's very tall. I can put the specs on the screen for you. And I have already put it into the light. There are solar panels here around the entire area of this top. So there's a panel, there's a panel, it goes all the way around, solar panels. This light also has a motion detector right there. So when it's sitting up, it stays lit as soon as it recognizes it's dark. But then if it sees, notices a person coming, this light in here gets brighter and so it actually will shine brighter to allow for you when you're walking. But this is a fairly tall one, and I've been, I've not put it together yet, but I've had it over there in my swing, propped up with pillows, just to see how bright. And of course this mirror in here really helps to, uh, I think, make the light look much brighter. But it is very bright. So I, I looked at a lot of different ones, and this one here was the tallest, and I wanted it to be, you know, fairly tall. So you basically, when it comes, it comes in these four parts. You have the bottom base, and then you have the next level up, the next level up, and then this one here uh, screws at the very top. The base comes with three mounting screws or bolts here so there's three of these but what I've decided to do because we do get a lot of wind is I'm going to pour a concrete base and while the concrete's wet I'm going to put the bolts the head of the bolts down in the concrete the best of my ability leaving the thread part sticking up that's my next project and I think it'll look really cool especially um, 
especially when we get other things planted around it and it's just kind of shining up there and I just love hardscape and I would classify lighting as a type of hardscaping you know fencing and walkways rock to me that's all like a type of hardscaping but I think lighting is a very important part of that as well I've decided where to put the lamp post basically I want it right here so in order to uh, secure it into the ground I'm going to dig out a little hole just big enough to pour some concrete and then I'll put something around the hole so that I can build up the concrete slightly because eventually I'm going to add a little more dirt and then mulch to this area when I plant around it and I don't want the bottom of my lamp post to be down in the ground or in the mulch so I just need to dig this area a little hole here and get it ready to pour the concrete. I'm not going to make it super deep because I don't think it's necessary. I just want something, you know, basically to give it some strength. So it's down in the ground a little bit and the wind blows. The, you know, that lamp post has not got a lot of wind resistance to it. It's just a pole. So I really don't think it's necessary to make it super deep. Now the goal is with this hole here is to, I want to raise the concrete up higher than the soil. So it's going to be tricky to do if I don't have something to hold the concrete mix in. So I've got this, it was a pot that a tree came in and it was going to be trash because you can see where it's all cracked. I cut the bottom out of it and I think what I'll do is I'll set it down in that hole and leave about I don't know, three and a half, four inches coming out of the top. And that'll be my form that'll hold in uh, the concrete. I made the, the hole in the earth just about right size for this to sit down in. Now, you know, I'm thinking to myself, it's important that this hole be level, but if I make my concrete thin enough, I think it will be self-leveling because I definitely don't want my lamppost to be leaning. So that sits it up off the ground, you know, four inches at least. And then that way I've got room to build up my soil level and mulch, you know, to this high. And then the lamppost base will sit right here. I'm sure there's lots of ways that you can mount these type of lights, um, wooden decks and things like that. But where I'm gonna put it, I want it to be uh, just outdoors and concrete so I need to make sure that I make me a, some type of a template uh, maybe with a sharpie or something so that I can lay it on that concrete and mark exactly where those bolts are going to go down in so that when it's all set up if I'm not going to be able to move it at that point I'll be able to slide this down the bolts will come through here sticking up and then I can just screw the nuts on top so I'm going to get me a piece of cardboard and make a template of where the holes need, well basically in the concrete, where the bolts need to be inserted. Can you see them? So I cut some holes exactly where my marks were. Another thing I have to take into consideration is how deep do I push the bolts. If you look at the bolts, there is a threaded section and then there is a section that's not threaded. So it came with two washers. So I put this washer down in there and this part will go down into the concrete. This part will stand up and come through the holes of the, uh, the post. So I've got to allow for the thickness here so that this comes up 
I've got enough room on these threads here to for the nut to grab it and, and hold it tight. So lots of things to consider there. So I need to probably allow that much uh, to come up, which means technically I could put about this much in the concrete. So probably at most an inch. I think the important thing is to go ahead and start putting it together so that I can keep this motion detector in the right location. So basically this one just has some threading inside and I'm just going to screw it onto this threading and then the bottom there will be threaded on to this one and then this one here will actually be mounted with three screws to this and that will complete it. And now for the final connection. So now I just have to take a Phillips head screwdriver and uh, screw in these screws. There's three of them. This is a very tall lamp post, which I love. I don't know if you can see. There's the base and there's the top, which is exactly what I was hoping. I didn't want to walk by it and have the light in my face. I wanted the light to be above. So I'm really thinking that's going to be pretty. So I went ahead and mounted my template to the base because I wanted to mark exactly where I need the front. I know that it fits the bolts with these holes in this direction. So I marked a red arrow showing exactly which way that I need to angle this so that the motion detector, the sensor, is going to be facing that direction. Now there's other ways I could have arranged it probably, but you can see there's the sensor. So I've never done this before, but I'm trying to make sure that when it's all said and done, you know, it's facing the right direction. So the next step to do is actually mix the concrete. Now there's my form. The old bucket. It's not a bucket. It's a it's a tree pot. This is the concrete that I bought. You can buy concrete, of course, at Lowe's. I ended up buying this at a, just a small town Ace Hardware for six dollars and ninety nine cents a bag. And the cool thing is, you just add water. So I have no idea. This is a sixty pound bag, and I bought three of them because I really did not know how far they would go. It's pretty thick, but it's certainly pourable. So I think I'll get my scoop and we'll just start scooping it in there. All of the dry stuff has been incorporated in. So I'm gonna go get my scoop and we'll start scooping it in the hole. Pretty heavy. Pretty thick. Wow, this bag's not really going that far, is it? All right, 
right, had to dump in my second bag because the first bag only got to right there. I'm thinking one more bag is all it'll need. So I'm going to mix this one up good, just like the last one, and we'll see how far it goes. All right, that's the second bag mixed, and it's a little bit thinner, so hopefully I didn't add too much water to it, but I'm thinking that's going to be enough to finish, uh, to finish this concrete here. It's probably more than what we need, actually. We ended up using larger washers on these bolts because the head on the bolt was so small, we were afraid it would pull, possibly pull right out of that concrete. So my husband found me some big washers. That should definitely anchor it down in that concrete. Uh, I want that arrow. So I've got my husband helping me here, and we're gonna put the arrow here facing, that's where the sensor's gonna be. So I'd like it facing right, pretty much right this way here. Okay down the driveway? Yeah, because that's where I'm going to come. So. so what we're going to do is jiggle this down. We're going to recess our rock. It took two, two bags. Not quite two bags. We're using real. You can see the rock is starting to go below the surface. Yeah, okay. We're just trying to kind of troweling it down. This is not the proper tools you would normally use for concrete, but it works. Okay, now. See how smooth that is? All right. Now we're going to get our bolts. We don't want to get any concrete on the threading. Direction. I want it pointing, yep. There we go. Careful, they'll go down in there. Okay. They only needed to go down about an inch. So the concrete was so thin, uh, I'm not sure, it was probably a combination of I added way too much water, thinking I wanted it to level itself out, which you do, I guess. But then also the pounding on it forced all of the gravel to the bottom. So what happened is the bolt started sinking because there was nothing solid in there to keep the bolts from going down. So as you can see, they're, they're way down in there too deep. I need far more uh, length than that coming out. However, it's not, it's not wanting to stay up. So we're going to... see it wants to sink back down so we're going to let it set up a little bit and, and hopefully it'll as it sets up it'll give us a little bit more density down there to hold those bolts up a little bit higher imagine there's another way we could do it we could probably pull it up and hold it with something else like a like a clamp I bet a clamp might work. So I managed to find three old clamps and I sort of have them just balanced on the side but they're holding the bolt so that the bolt can't slide down in there. My only concern is underneath this cardboard I can't tell how deep this bolt is going but I know that it's four inches and there's only like maybe an inch and a half up so yeah, I definitely think there should be plenty that's down in that concrete. But we'll watch it really close as it sets up. Uh, as long as we don't break, you know, break the concrete, I'm thinking we can probably wiggle it a little bit. So two hours later, um, it's really starting to set up. We took the clamps off. We brought the light out here to make sure that it would fit over all three of these bolts and it does well there it is 
I haven't tightened down the nuts yet on the base, but the concrete is pretty hard. This is the following day, and uh, that thing is pretty tall. But you don't have to worry about the light being really in your face. It's up above you. So that's kind of what I wanted. I just imagine all around here having some flowers and things planted. I think that'll be really pretty. I'm anxious to see what it looks like at night. Well, you can see that it's a real low light right now, and it's still a little bit daylight out here. It just turned on, but as I walk closer to it, boom. Now I have the option, um, there's a button on the back where I can actually turn it to on, and it will stay bright like that all night until the sun comes up. So it's, uh, it's pretty bright. The only thing I have against it is that it is a very white light and um, a lot of my other lights are more of a warm light. Those are kind of warm and then the ones I have over here are more of the warm lights. So if you guys wanted warm lighting, this one here may be too, too white for you. It's hard to focus with it being dark like this, but it definitely works as far as the, um, see how it brightens up? Then you can see, see how it brightens up the area. It's actually very bright out here and it lights up the, the walkway and I don't have any lighting now. I have to be here on this little walkway up to the greenhouse in order for it to pick up. The, the distance, um, its ability to detect is a, not very far. So I may decide just to leave it on the on position because that will keep it that bright forever. Oh, my husband just triggered the lights, but that's okay. But see how it's a very cool light and how these are very warm. So I do prefer the more warm light myself. But um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you guys what it looked like after it was all said and done. Thanks for watching.